What's up, Interweb? Raikwin here, and welcome to the very last week for GBA Season 4 Weekly Recap. We're in week number 10, and we are starting things the way we finished. Shout out to Slyro and Super Getty for filling in for us last week. Thank you very much. But we are back to what it should be with myself and Adam from DNA TV. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, like you're saying, this is week 10. It's the last week. It's going to be people either playing for their playoff lives playing to not be last in the league, or just not playing at all. Uh, and with that, we will move into the first battle that didn't happen, uh, and that would be the Milwaukee Sawsbucks versus the St. Louis Rampardos. Um, this was a forfeit originally, uh, and still counts as a forfeit, for uh, for Dan to have a 3-0 victory for here. Uh, but they did play a little scrimmage, and they had Sam uh, Fufu 2 actually take Steve's team and, and play Dan, which was actually really interesting, really fun to watch. Um, I don't know if you, any of you have seen that yet, but if you haven't, I would definitely go watch that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if we really want to comment on that since it's an unofficial battle. but uh, Yeah. I mean, it, it counts as Dan getting a 3 0 victory, and that's the thing that counts, but Dan lost. Spoilers. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so that happened. But, yeah, St. Louis Rampart is picking up a 3 0 victory over the source spots because of a forfeit. So, not much else to say on that one. So, moving on to... Uh, the second match from this week, and this match did actually happen, and this is the Cincinnati Loudreds and Mulvone taking on the San Francisco Giantes and Gym Leader Geo. And Gym Leader Geo finishing the season strong with a 2-0 victory over the Loudreds. Uh, and I don't have much to say about this match other than one thing. Scarfed Gudra. <laughs> <laughs> People have been saying the entire season how much of a threat Weavile is and pushing for MVP and all that stuff. You know what can take it down? A scarfed Gudra. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he used a scarfed Gudra to outspeed Weavile. Um, Malvone did not see it coming, and he just popped that thing with an outrage, and Weavile was down. Like, props to Gym Leader Geo for that. Um, aside from that, wasn't too much crazy stuff in this match, other than one thing that I know Adam's going to pick up on. Um, Are you trying to take it from me again? Uh, maybe a little bit. Um, uh, but I, I don't have too much else to add, so you go ahead. Knock yourself out. I don't think anybody would ever see a Scarf Gudra coming, so I don't really blame Malfone yeah, at all. Exactly. Uh, the other thing that was very interesting was the fact that Gastrodon died to a burn, which, yeah, it's not that big of a deal, except for the burn happened because of Scald, which, if anyone knows, one of Gastrodon's ability is Storm Drain, which makes it immune to water-type moves. So it's very interesting that Gastrodon, Gastrodon died to a, a Scald. He, he apparently brought a, a Sticky Hold one, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting when I saw the stat line uh, while we were recording. But like you said, a 2-0 victory for the Giantes and uh, ending pretty strong. They actually came back really uh, really strongly towards the end of the season. Uh, it was too bad that they, they lost Week 9 or else they would have kept potentially kept their playoff hopes alive. Um, but we'll move on to the next battle, which was a battle for who will not be last in the league. Uh, and that was against the, the Long Island Red Rockies versus the Pittsburgh Pirate Tatas. Uh, and that was a 3-0 victory for Nips and the Long Island Red Rockies. Uh, this was one of those battles where, uh, although you know Tup kind of planned for Halucha and he had some things to semi-deal with it, he let Mega Alakazam go down, and from there it was pretty much came over even without the uh, unburdened speed boost there was nothing else that could really really stand toe to toe with Halucha after that and uh, he got he racked up five kills in this last battle uh, which is pretty impressive I, I and the league leaders will have to see if he jumps up really high or not but uh yeah aside from that it was just a pretty straightforward it just it was unfortunate that Halucha came in he he got his moment and he uh he took advantage of it mm-hmm and uh, ju just one little mistake from Tup was that he brought in Hitmon Top uh, to try and get an Intimidate on Holucha when it was behind a substitute, which obviously didn't work. And Tup was just like, oh, I need to get my head out of fourth gen mechanics. Um, yeah. Just just a little thing, but he, he tried to make Hitmon Top work around the sub and, you know, it just kind of uh, forced him to switch something else in on, on Holucha, which, you know, had to try and sack things off, which just didn't work out for him. But um, Holucha, as you said, picking up five kills, which is great for uh, for Holucha for the league leaders which we'll come on to very shortly um, but with that said 3 of victory for the Red Rockies finishing strong and we are going to move on to the fourth match from this week uh, and this is the Winnipeg Aqua Jets and Hank the Pidgey taking on Shady Penguin and the New York Mankeys 
And uh, the Mankeys are the team that's finishing strong this time with a 4-0 victory over the Aqua Jets. And in this match, uh, the uh, New York Mankeys and Shady Penguin, he made some uh, very solo plays, some very uh, middle ground switches, but that's all he needed to do in this match because uh, Hank really didn't have too much to deal with Milotic for the Mankeys. Uh, the best thing he could do was bring in Alamomola, but... Alan Mola really couldn't do anything to Milotic in return, and uh, it allowed Shady to go into Conkelda and just put a lot of pressure on Hank's team. There was a very unfortunate freeze on Latias uh, from Ice Beam Milotic, uh, which took out the Latias, and uh, it wasn't for nothing because Hank did manage to freeze the Conkelda, which then thawed out immediately on the same turn. Um, but. Uh, yeah, just a very solid game from Shady, but yeah, it was just Hank really had nothing to take on Milotic as well as he'd hoped. Um, yeah, anything else to add to that? Uh, the only other thing that I had was that uh, it was a really good play from Shady to stay in with Conkelder against the Mega Pincer uh, when he was carrying the uh, Fire Punch. Uh, so that, that allowed Mega Pincer not to kind of set up and at least try to bring it back, and that just kept him with those middle ground plays and the Melodic. Uh, advantage just kept them uh, ahead the entire battle and uh, like I said it was a 4-0 victory for Shady and uh, that could have potentially been very dangerous for for Hank had uh, had Geo not lost in week nine because that could have made the playoff picture a lot more variable speaking of the playoff picture being variable mm. we'll go to the New Orleans, New Orleans Pelopers who are playing for their lives in the playoffs versus the Detroit Steel Wings who uh, were not playing for their lives. Uh, however, uh, this battle got kept getting pushed back and kept getting pushed back until the 4th of July, uh, and then Crimson just forfeited because the time just never matched up. Uh, that was a 3-0 win for John, which having a win for John is good in this scenario, but 3-0 margin uh, doesn't, didn't really help him try to potentially catch up to uh, the Jasmine. Yeah, the Jasmine who were at plus 10, I believe, at that point, and John was at, at plus 3 at that point. So uh, it really came down to the last battle, which I'm going to lead in for you to go. Well, thank you very much. So <laughs> the last match from this week, and the one that decides the playoff spot for uh, the New Orleans Pelopers and the Utah Jasmine. So if, if for this last match, the Utah Jasmine lost at 5-0 uh, or 6-0, it would mean that the New Orleans Pelopers automatically qualify for the playoffs, and if they lost 4-0, it meant that they would be tied on differential. Anything less than that, uh, if they lost by a lower margin, or the Utah Jasmine won, uh, then they'd go to the playoffs. So, what happened in this match? The Utah Jasmine and Cooper taking on the Real Maril and Mega Mogwai. Wouldn't you know it, the Utah Jasmine losing 4-0 to the Real Maril, so they finished tied. Utah Jasmine and the New Orleans Pelopers finished tied on the, they have the same record with the same differential and we'll discuss what happens with the playoffs with regard to that in a bit but first let's talk about this match this match oh my goodness um <laughs> for those of you who saw either side of this match you know exactly what happened to this one and cooper being cooper being unpredictable uh is the name of the game in this one uh, i believe is only somewhat standard set if you want to call it if, despite not being a standard set at all but the one that wasn't completely you know crazy um was a scarf nido king with head smash um but on top of that he had a uh, a physical hustle tokikiss also with grass knot um he had a a specially offensive blissey with life orb uh he had a swagger subseeding whimsicott um a quick claw dusk noir um <laughs> And a home clause Inferno Mega Charizard X, um, so there was there was crazy crazy stuff in this one. And uh, Scarf Nido came with head smash actually killed Thunderous, which was cool to see. Um, Whimsicott swaggered Victini, which then proceeded to hit itself twice in confusion and kill itself. Um, it pulled off some really really interesting things, um, but at the end of the day, uh, Miguel and Mega Mogwai just pulled it back and. Uh, just, you know, played like he needed to play around these crazy sets uh, to pick up a 4-0 victory. Is there anything else you want to add to that? 
Uh, this is just further proof that uh, the Jasmine EV inaccuracy, because <laughs> Head Smash landed again, again. Um, and Megazard X, after one home clause, I think only makes uh, Inferno like 71% accurate or something like that, mm-hmm. and he landed that. So definitely EVs and accuracy. Uh, also potentially just EVs and bizarro world because those were just all sorts of crazy but you know what that's that's how you do oh and how can i forget water pulse blissey of course oh yes uh they did a a solid like 25 percent to the victim (laughs) i believe it was more like 40 but yeah i'll give you that it was it was a hell of a lot of damage to the (laughs) victim it was spectacular um Uh, but anyway leaders League leaders. Uh, we'll, we'll go over the league leaders, and then we'll talk about the playoffs and what happens with those things. So, who finishes as the league leader? Well, it's the thing that's been there since week one. It's Weavile for the Cincinnati Loudreds. 17 kills, 3 deaths, and a plus 14 differential. Uh, I don't think we have much more to say about this thing. We've been talking about it since week one, and it's still here. Uh, a great one. Didn't get any kills this week. 0-1 this week, but still the league leader for GBA Season 4. Just insanity. Uh, because number two is the Pokemon that I think has been number two the entire league, mm. potentially. Uh, and that's Mega Pinsir with 17 kills, 5 deaths, plus 12 differential. Not Again, not really much you can say about it. We've been talking about it the entire season. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, in third place, we have Mega Gardevoir for the Milwaukee Source Bucks. 13 kills, 5 deaths, and a plus 8 differential. Uh, does that including the battle with... I, or... I'm not sure. That's actually pretty interesting, because... Mm. Did he jump up? Cause, uh, I, for felt, the... I feel like he's jumped up. Because for the last two weeks, he should have zero kills and zero deaths. <laughs> yes, he should. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That's maybe that's Steve's little parting present by maybe. moving his mon to number three. Uh and I'll go through the remaining four through ten. We have Hydreigon at ten kills, uh two deaths, plus eight differential. At number five, we have Crocodile with ten kills, three deaths, plus seven differential. At number six, we have Gudra, Scarf Gudra, uh ten kills, nine deaths, plus one differential. At number seven, we have Mega Lopunny at nine kills, one death, and plus eight differential. Uh, number eight is Superior at nine kills, three deaths, and plus six differential. Number nine is the first fast electric mon to, I think, break the top ten the entire season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jolteon with nine kills, five deaths, and plus four differential. And last but certainly not least is Melodic at number ten with nine kills, Seven deaths and plus two differential. Yeah, Milotic has been a a key player for Shady the entire season. I believe it's been in the top ten since week one. I believe, um, still there, which is pretty cool to see. Um, on top of that, there's not too many crazy things in the top ten that you wouldn't expect to see. Gudra maybe wouldn't really expect to see that too much, but on top of that, there's not you know the things that we saw at the start of the season. Chansey, Mega Sableye, things like that. Um, but, yeah, I, I, that's a very solid League Leaders list, and Weavile being the cream of the crop in this one uh, and coming in at number one. I was going to say that uh, it's interesting. I, is this the f- potentially the first week that uh, Mega Sableye and or Mew, or not Mew, uh, Chansey is not in the top ten? Uh, I think you might be right with that one. They, they are Mega Sableye is 12th. Right. Uh, and I don't even know where Chansey is. That's yeah. 33rd. My goodness. He's all the way down. Wow. 6-6 six and six for Chansey. Mm. Zero differential. But anywho, um, now we talk about the playoffs, which is probably what you guys are here to, to, to see. Um, so as we said before, the New Orleans Pelopers and the Utah Jasmine were tied on record and differential in the in their division. So who actually progresses to the playoffs well it's been decided that uh because of division and conference wins i believe uh the new orleans pelopers actually progress to the playoffs in the Sino conference which means that the teams uh that are actually progressing to the playoffs in in full 
uh, from the Hoenn Conference. We have the Cincinnati Loudreds, the Winnipeg Aqua Jets, and the Real Morel. Uh, and then from the Sinnoh side, we have the New Orleans Pelopers, the St. Louis Rampados, and the New York Mankeys. So, who plays who? I'll, I'll let you discuss this one, Adam. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll talk about that. Then we can go to our own predictions, because yes, that's can. what we do, and I'm pretty excited to do those. Yeah. Um, so we have, starting off in the Sinnoh Conference, we will have uh, Shady Penguin and the New York Mankeys playing the uh, New Orleans Pelopers with uh, John, uh, a.k.a. Pokemon, in uh, waiting. And then waiting for them, the winner of that, will be Dan, because he, he gets a buy, because yeah. he has the best record out of that entire conference. Um, then for Hoenn, we have Hank and the Winnipeg Aqua Jets versus who? Mulvone? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mulvone. Um, and the winner of that will get to play Miguel because he had the best record slash uh, differential. And so he got the bye. So uh, then the winner of those two battles will go to the championship and, and battle each other. Um, exactly. So who do you have for round one out of those two battles? Oh, my goodness. Now now our predictions get serious. Um, <laughs> So, for the Sino Conference, we have uh, the New Orleans Pelopers taking on the New York Mankeys, and these guys faced each other once in the season, which was week one, and the right. Mankeys won, 1-0. <laughs> like, it was a very, very close game, um, and I don't think John will be making the same mistake again using uh, a, an electric move on his Raikou against a Milotic that's going for Miracle. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be doing that again. Um, so, honestly... What I'm going to say is I think the New Orleans Pelopers are going to take the first match against the Mankeys. I think because I think he's going to learn from his mistakes and I think he's coming into this with a very positive attitude. He, he you know, didn't have the greatest start to the season. He was kind of clawing his way, only just made the playoffs. But I think he's seeing this as like, well, I'm here now. Same as everyone else. It's a clean slate. Anyone can win this, so let's, let's go and win this. And I think with that attitude, uh, John can take this match against Shady. What about you for that one? So, quoting John, he's, he's got to finish what he started. Mm. However, I'm a little bit hesitant on this one because Shady, Shady did beat him. I think Shady's team matches up extremely well against John's. And not to mention, Shady has become increasingly familiar and good with playing with the team that he currently has, mm. which scares me for John. Because I think John's obviously improved with the team that he has, but I still don't feel like he's overly comfortable with what he's got. Um, so, <laughs> as much as I love John, I, I love him. I, I'm going to have to go with Shady on this one. I, I, I'm just going to have to go with Shady, unfortunately. Uh, I love you, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Shady is going to pull this one out. Uh, another potentially very close 1-0 battle. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Either way it goes, I'm pretty certain it's going to be a very, very good battle. Either it's way. It's definitely not going to be a blowout. It's going to be yeah. a very close, good battle. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, so then moving across the other side, as I said before, we have the Cincinnati Loudreds and Mobile and taking on the Winnipeg Aqua Jets and Hank. So who do you have in that one? So they went, they split their battles one and one mm-hmm. because they played each other, what, week five, week six? Is that yep. what? It- I think so, yeah. Oh, man. This will be interesting um, because, obviously, Mulvone can't pull out the same bag of tricks that won him week one, or maybe he can because people won't think that he will be able to. Uh, I think that Hank, he made that trade to get uh, Mamos, pretty much just Mamoswine out of that, uh, and I think Mamoswine matches up so extremely well with both Miguel and Mulvone that's why he, he did that, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think that he takes it. I, I think that he'll be able to put enough offensive pressure with Mamoswine to just kind of break through what Mulvone's going to be bringing. Uh, so that's that's my prediction. I think that'll be like a, a 2-0 in Hank's favor. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, this is, again, going to be a very, very close game, I'm pretty sure. Um, but on this one, I think I'm going to go with Hank. Um I think this is not necessarily in a in a, a matchup standpoint, but from my view, uh, Morvone f- is finishing the season with two losses back to back, losing to the uh, to the Giantes and uh, who was it the week before? I can't remember. Week nine, whoever he played, he lost anyway. Um, 
But he he's losing his last two matches. And, it was uh, it was shady, by the way. Ah, of course, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, losing to to shady and then to uh, Geo in the last week. Uh, so he lost his last two matches in the regular season, and uh, Hank is coming off a win. Uh, sorry, no, he's not. He played shady. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> Hank uh, is, I I think. Uh, because, because Mulvone had been so positive throughout the entire season, you know, before those two losses, he was 7-1, and one. he only had that one loss, uh, and then he came and lost his last two matches, he, he started very strong, he, I believe he had five matches undefeated at the start of the season, and then towards the end he kind of fizzled out a little bit, if that carries on into the playoffs, uh, I can really see Hank taking advantage of that and uh, overcoming him, um, but it's going to be close, but I think I am going to go with Hank, um, I think that Malvone was a little bit of uh, a little bit of a wild card at the start of the season. People didn't really know what to expect from him, and he took advantage of that very well, uh, getting those wins at the start of the season. But now people are becoming very familiar with his team and how he uses it, and I think Hank's going to be able to adapt to that and take the match. I think. I'll I'll say this: uh, my one leeriness slash watch out for Hank is that again he did make this trade. Uh, so he has two new mons, and I think he got them. Uh, he got to start using them either last week or maybe the week before. So that's you know that's a, a, a decently significant change to your team going into a playoff, which could maybe bite him in the butt because of the fact that he is less familiar with how his team's going to mesh together. But again, like I said, Mammoth Swine matches up really well against his potential two opponents in the in the playoffs. So mm-hmm. I can see why he did it. Yeah. All right, then. And one last final prediction from you, then. Mm. Who is going to win the playoffs? Who is going to be crowned as a Season 4 champion? Mm. Okay, so I'm predicting Shady to win against John. Then I'm predicting Dan to beat Shady because I think Dan just has Shady's number. Uh, I'm predicting Miguel to beat Hank after Hank beats Mulvone. And I predict Miguel to beat Dan because Mega Lopani is just going to be almost too friggin' difficult for Dan to, to deal with. Um, so I'm going to say Miguel. Alrighty. Um, <laughs> on my side then, uh, I can actually see John beating Shady. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I can actually see John defeating Dan. I'm going to the final on that side. Uh, and on the other side, I can see Hank beating Malvone, and then Miguel beating Hank. So then it would be a Miguel John final, which could really go either way. But I think I'm going to come up with the same end result, and I'm going to say Miguel is going to uh, to be the season four champion. I think those well, are very vague predictions that I haven't really thought about them too much. But that's my first impressions would be, I'd say Miguel. I mean, he was nine and one in the season with a plus thirty three differential that's how it ended so it's like it's very hard to argue against miguel at this point so Uh, i I will say this mm -hmm. Uh, miguel's run has been eerily similar (laughs) to the gb the gba d league season one which speaking of there's a video for gba d league season two that you guys should go check out Uh, nice plug god i'm good uh anyways that ended in just heartbreak from Miguel because he, he lost his first round of the playoff. So I, you know, it makes me, it makes me a little bit nervous because it, it's so similar to how he was doing in, uh, in the D league, but maybe he, maybe he learned from his, uh, his errors there. So we'll, we'll see. It'll, it'll be interesting. No matter what the playoffs are, are ramping up to be really exciting because it's again, the cream of the crop battling each other. Uh, and you guys should definitely stick around for those. I think what we try to do is have the, playoff videos start on the GBA channel yes. and then and then they're uploaded to their respective respective uh, uh, YouTube content creators uh, site. Mm-hmm. Wow. I just sounded really old there by saying <laughs> site. <laughs> um, yeah, these playoffs are going to be absolutely fantastic and I know uh, we are going to have uh, an extended week. Uh, it's been explained in an update video that I did on the channel earlier. Uh, but there's an extended week, so the the, ma- the matches aren't starting 
this Sunday. They're starting the Sunday after, but there is a load of content coming to the GBA channel itself between now and then. Um, just hyping up the playoffs because the playoffs are going to be super duper hype. Um, let us know your predictions in the comments, by the way, of who you think is going to do what in the playoffs. Uh, you've heard the matchups, you've heard who's playing who, so give us your predictions. Who do you think is going to win in each match, and who do you think is going to walk out as the GBA Season 4 champion? Um, I I want some reasoning with it, because yes. I, I always have a lot of fun reading why you guys think what you think, because it's you, you guys pick up on a lot of things that we don't, and it's it's awesome to read. So definitely put why you think who's going to win is going to win, because uh, it, it's really fun to read. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but with that said, I believe that is going to wrap up the Week 10 recap. And with that, I think that's probably going to wrap up the weekly recaps for GBA Season 4. Probably. I know, emotional stuff. Um, thank you, Adam, for being awesome with these recaps. This was a lot of fun, man. I mean, I, I can't go against my natural state of being awesome, so you're welcome. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know why I said that. And uh, thank you guys for watching not just this video, but for the entire uh, season of the GBA. Thank you for watching all the videos. Um, you know, obviously, this is my first season as being an analyst and all that stuff. And yeah, it's been awesome to see your guys' feedback. So um, yeah, this isn't the end of me on the GBA channel, but uh, no. this is the end of the, the weekly recaps for now. Um, so thank you very much, guys. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Wait, 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 wait. What? He's been awesome. I've been Adam. You guys have also been awesome. See you later. You can't even do it right. <laughs> you tried copying it, and you can't even do it right. <laughs> I've been Reichwin, he's been Adam, and you've been awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>